be my guest to the depths of hell. I wonder what it would be like tonight if God would allow the lid of hell to be removed. Wonder what it would do to our hearts and lives if we could see the inside of the charred walls of the dam. For just a few moments tonight, I would like to borrow your imagination and take you to the crevices of hell. All of a sudden, from out of the shadows, exits the bellboy of hell. As that he steps out of the darkness and looks at the great multitude, he smiles and says, Welcome! Welcome to the depths of hell. Immediately we can hear the roaring of the flames, the smell of the smoke, and the wailing of the wicked dead. In just a matter of a moment before our very eyes, the pit is opened wide, and the new arrivals that accompanied me begin their eternal perishing in the flames of the damned. That is, everybody around me is burning. The flames of the wrath of Almighty God are licking their never-dying souls. Now, the Bible does talk about it. The Bible does talk about it. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, the Apostle Paul said, flame and fire. Peter, in Second Peter 2, 4, said he dressed up the angels and see him and cast them down to hell. James, in James chapter 3 and verse 6, said the tongue is set on fire of hell. And the book of Revelation, John said, whosoever was not found written in the book of life would be cast into the lake of fire. Jude, in the book of uh, Jude, chapter 1 and verse 7, said that the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah are present tense, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Ladies and gentlemen, hey, you ask us why we run buses, because there's a hell. You ask us why we support missionaries, there's a hell. You ask us why we why we fast and we preach hard, there's a hell where people go and burn forever and never and never according to this book. You've never been dead and you don't know nobody who has been dead. The only other person who has an authority on it who has been dead and come back is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he told us that it's there. Said, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Mark 9, 47, you'd be better off to go to hell with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Consciously, it's down inside them that it's real. Isn't it funny that they say it ain't real, but they talk about it all the time? They'll say one thing for sure, he died and went to hell. I'm saying they're always telling you couldn't watch TV probably two hours without hearing the word hell and damn and damn to hell and uh, in the wrong over and over and over and over and over. You know why they talk about it? Cause deep, deep down inside they know it's got to be true. There is a hell. It's burning this morning. It's blistering this morning. There's people in hell right now that died last night in car accident. They'll never get out. The Bible declares it. The wall suggests it. It's in every movie. It's on the big screen. See you in hell. Rotten hell. I hope you I hope you rot. That's what they say on all the newscasts. I hope he rots in hell every day in every courtroom when a judge says uh, he's innocent. The family sitting over here saying, I hope he goes to hell. They know it's real. If you die without the Lord Jesus Christ, you will lift up your eyes, falling in a pit. You will be falling headlong down, down, down into the pit of hell. It'll be the greatest shock that you ever had in your life because you do not believe that it exists. But you will not be able to deny the reality of the place that you have entered into. You have entered into hell. There is a place that is so horrible that the human mind cannot conceive it. But it was not conceived by the human mind. It was originated in the word of the living God. It was made for the devil and his angels. And you will be in for a surprise. For you will lift up your eyes in hell. The Lord Jesus Christ said, don't fear him that can destroy the body. He said, yea, I forewarn you. Who 
whom ye shall fear. Fear him that hath power not only to destroy the body, but to cast you into hell. And that, my friend, is in the hands of the living God. The Bible said it's a terrible thing. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And that's exactly where you fall when you leave this world without the Lord. The Bible says that our God is a consuming fire. It is the fire of holiness that consumes in hell fire. It burns nothing to burn it up. It doesn't need anything to burn as we understand. It is that burning flame that consumes and consumes and consumes and burns and burns and burns forever. The screams that rise up from hell, the Bible said is weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. You think you won't, but you will. And you continue to fall deeper and deeper and deeper you go into the bottomless pit. The horrors rise up beside you. The sound and the screams and the smell and the fire all encompasses you because you're dropping down into the land of the condemned. They that enter in have no hope. There is no hope in hell. There are no children in hell. There is no peace in hell. There, my friend, is no mercy in hell. There, my friend, is no grace in hell. But hell is a place of torment and damnation. Oh, I didn't write the Bible. I didn't say a word about it. God didn't consult with me. This book was written before I was ever conceived. And hell fire was there before I ever came into this world. The Bible said hell was not made for man. It was made for the devil and his angels. And you continue to fall deeper and deeper and deeper into condemnation. Condemnation is a process from the moment that you're born in this world till you take your last breath. You're going down a path. Either that path leads to Christ or that path leads to hell. There's a reality of where you're going when you leave this world. Either you're going to the Lord God and you're going into the land that is fairer than day. And by faith we can see it afar. Or you're going to hell fire. You're going to the pit. You're going to the land of the damned. You're going where there's no hope. You're going to condemnation. You're going to hell. And so my friend, when that day comes, you'll scream, you'll beg. There's praying in hell. You better believe it. There's crying in hell. Every imagination of a human mind, all the emotions that make us what we are, rise up out of hell. But there's no one down to help and no one there cares. The well, one next to you screaming, this one's screaming, you're screaming, and you're in hell. You say, preacher, why would such a thing happen to a human being? It's when you reject the Lord Jesus Christ, you refuse the sacrifice that was made for you, where there at Calvary, God the Lord, the Son of God, took your hell into his body on the tree, and we deny him and we reject him every single day of our lives, and by doing so, write our own death warrant. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift.